Good morning, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Midweek Encourager. We celebrated yesterday our Memorial Day. I hope it was a wonderful day for you and your family. I um, hope you had enjoyed the, the temperate weather and enjoyed lots of great food and fellowship and time with your family. Uh, I'd like to read to you this morning John 15, verse 13. Only one verse, but a very key verse, John 15, 13. And uh, uh, as, we, as we once again honor Memorial Day and kind of bring it to a close this morning. John 15, 13, Jesus said, Greater love has no man than this to lay down one's life for his friends. All right? Um, I want, want to tell you a story this morning uh, about a, a young man named Jesse Leroy Brown. Jesse Brown was born in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, um, and his dreams of flying began at a very early age. He was the son of a sharecropper, and so he spent many, many, many hours out in the cornfields and the cotton fields, and every time an airplane would appear in the sky, Jesse would tell his family, one day I'm going to fly. And his family would good-naturedly laugh, but they didn't take him seriously. But Jesse was serious. He, he was determined to become a pilot. And so to prove it, he performed well in school all the way through, uh, all the way through school. And in high school, he excelled in academics as well as in athletics. You see, he wanted to study architectural engineering at Ohio State University, which at that time, of course, was an all-white college. And so this was, a, this was the impossible dream for Jesse Brown. But he applied, he was accepted, and in the fall of 1944, he became the only black student enrolled in Ohio State's College of Engineering. He worked odd jobs and also joined the Navy Reserve uh, to pay for his education. And um, he just fell in love with the military lifestyle. And against all odds, in March of 1947, Midshipman Brown became the first African American accepted into Navy flight training. From there on, it was uh, it, he went into the Navy, and on October 21 of 1948, Ensign Brown was awarded his Navy Aviator wings, the first black man to wear the wings of gold. He flew an F-4 Corsair, a uh, propeller-driven airplane, in uh, a fighter plane in Korea, assisting the U United Nations troops, providing air cover for the ground forces. On December 2, 1950, Brown's section attacked the enemy uh, in defense of some U uh, a contingent of U.S. Marines who were trapped near the Chosan Reservoir. And uh, because of the success of that attack, they repelled the enemy. The, the uh, Marines were able to withdraw to a point that they could be rescued. Brown's Corsair was hit by enemy fire, and he was not able to make it back. So he ended up having to crash land onto a snowy mountain, and he died as a result of his injuries in that, in that crash. Uh, there, were, there were so many heroic details on December 2 and December 3, but we can't cover them all in, in, the, uh, in, in this short video. So I hope you'll look up Jesse Leroy Brown and, and find some more uh, details on this. It's an amazing story. Life Magazine published this story. Ensign 
Jesse Leroy Brown was posthumously, posthumously awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal, and the Purple Heart. Not only was Jesse the first African-American Navy aviator, he was also the first African-American uh, Navy officer to lose his, lose his life in combat. He was also the first African-American uh, to have a Navy ship named after him, the Je USS Jesse L. Brown, that was christened on March 18, 1972. There are countless stories like Jesse Brown's, and all too often, often they're forgotten or never told. Stories can live on forever, but they have to be told. That's our responsibility, is to tell the, the stories of American heroes, of American, uh, American men and women who have given their lives to buy our national freedom. And make sure that our children understand that Memorial Day is way more than just the day the swimming pools open and picnic season begins, school's out, and summer has started. There's more to it than that. <clears throat> the commitment, the courage, and the sacrifice of those who've given their lives for our freedoms should never be taken for granted. Sadly, honoring fallen heroes is not commonplace any longer. And unless future generations are taught that their freedom was purchased at a great price, the true meaning of Memorial Day itself may become nothing more than just a memorial, a memory. As we celebrate our fallen heroes who gave their lives for us, we must always remember our risen hero, Jesus. Without his atoning death and his miraculous resurrection, the rest of our life, the rest of our eternity would be of no consequence. Other fallen heroes can't do anything for you any longer. Their deeds are all in the past. But Jesus can still save you today if you'll call out to him. He said he would save you. He promised his help. He promised his strength. He promised his sustaining power day by day, moment by moment, if we will trust him. <clears throat> I want to thank you again for joining with us today for Midweek Encourager. It's my privilege to be your pastor, and I love you. Look forward to seeing you again, hopefully this Sunday.